Is the concern about morality and media just a right-wing conservative agenda or a fundamentalist soapbox? Listen to this insightful statement. The moral importance of entertainment is something which has been universally recognized. A man may be judged by his standard of entertainment as easily as by the standard of his work. Where do you suppose that came from? You might be surprised to find out that it was part of Hollywood's Motion Picture Production Code in 1930. That production code, which was meant to be a set of self-regulating guidelines to keep unacceptable content out of motion pictures, was not a reflection of morality and decency in Hollywood at that time. It was the result of a general public outcry due to risque content in films being produced, as well as off-screen scandals in Hollywood. In 1921, nearly 100 censorship bills had been introduced in 37 states. In order to stave off the state laws and the potential of federal censorship laws looming on the horizon, the film industry hired a man named Will Hayes, who led a successful public relations campaign of industry self-regulation. In 1930, Will Hayes adopted the production code that was written and submitted by a Catholic priest. Listen to this example from the general principles. No picture shall be produced that will lower the moral standards of those who see it. Hence, the sympathy of the audience should never be thrown to the side of crime, wrongdoing, evil, or sin. This checked Hollywood for a season, but over the years, the industry continued to press the envelope in order to draw audiences. By 1968, the code, which had been continually changed, skirted, or liberally interpreted, was replaced by a new rating system. picture that shows what America's all-time number one bestseller first put into words. I wasn't much of a man living with you, Neely, but that's over. I'm straightened out now. With that little whore! That little whore makes me feel nine feet tall. Dolls, the instant turn-on. For instant love. Instant excitement. Ultimate Hell. Nearly Starring Barbara Parkins as Anne. Good girl with a million dollar face and all the bad breaks. She took the green pills. Well, how do you think I feel sneaking out of your apartment at four o'clock in the morning? Patty Duke as Neely, who was such a nice kid. And then someone put her name in lights and turned her into a lush. She took the red pills. Sure, I take dolls. I've got to get some sleep. I've got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's sparkle, Neely. Sparkle. Neely, you know it's bad to take liquor with those pills. They work faster. Have you heard from Jennifer? She wanted to know where she could get an abortion. Sharon Tate as Jennifer. International sex symbol, victimized by everyone. She took the blue pills. Go to hell with them. Let them drew. And honey. Let's face it, all I know how to do is take off my clothes. Susan Hayward as Helen Lawson, who had the talent to get to the top. And I'll make it A gut, fingernail, and claw fighter who went down swinging. She took the yellow pills. Look, they drummed you right out of Hollywood. So you come crawling back to Broadway. Well, Broadway doesn't go for booze and dope. You get out of my way. I've got a guy waiting for me. That's a switch from the fags you're usually stuck with. At least I never had a marry one. You take that back and your hands off. Back. You. 
the nation's most startling and hotly discussed bestseller, now on the screen with every shock and sensation intact. You think I could sleep with you here in this house? This wonderful old house? And you beside me in that marvelous old four-poster upstairs? It's a marriage bed, Lion. You were thinking of marriage. Miriam? I'm pregnant. Oh, Helen, come on. Neely O'Hara can't hurt you. <laughs> you bet your ass he can't, because he isn't going to get the chance. Now, the all-time bestseller is the motion picture you wanted it to be. Valley of the Dolls. Joanna Prentice, I'll be. What the hell is going on here? I love your daughter. There is nothing I wouldn't do to try to keep her as happy as she was the day I met her. But it seems to me, without your approval, we will make no sense at all. That is why I'm asking for the clearest possible statement of what your My attitude son, is going to be. I love you. But you think of yourself as a colored man. I think of myself as a man. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. Never again. It, 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 nobody is going to use my apartment from now on. Where is your apartment, Baxter? West 67th Street. You have no idea what I've been going through with the neighbors and the landlady and the liquor and the key and... How do you work with the key? I usually slip it to him in the office and then they leave it under a mat. Never again. I can promise you that. Yes, Miss Olson. Mrs. Sheldrake, returning your call. On to... I 
Well, you had to take Tommy to the dentist, huh? No cavities, good. Uh, hold it, dear. Where are you going, Baxter? I don't want to intrude. I, I, I thought since everything was straightened out anyway. I'm not through with you yet. The reason I called is I won't be home for dinner tonight. The branch manager from Kansas City's in town. I'm taking him to the theater. <laughs> Music man, what else? No, don't wait out for me, darling. Goodbye. Tell me, Baxter, have you seen Music Man? Hmm? It, well, not yet. I have here. It's one swell show. How would you like to go tonight? Hey, will you and me? I thought you were taking the branch manager from uh, Kansas City. No, I have other plans. You can have both tickets. Well, that's very kind of you, but I'm not feeling well. I, say I've got this cold. I'm going to go right home. Baxter, you're not reading me. I told you I have plans. Uh, so do I. I'm going to take four aspirin, get into bed, so you might as well give the tickets to somebody else. Look, Baxter, I'm not just giving these tickets. I want to swap them. Swap them for what? It also says here that you are alert, astute, and uh, quite imaginative. Oh? Oh. That's good thinking, Baxter. There's going to be a shift in personnel around here next month. As far as I'm concerned, you are executive material. <laughs> I actually fell for him. It. That. There. Martha's a romantic at heart. <laughs> that I am. I actually fell for him. And the match seemed practical, too. For a while, Daddy really thought that George minute, had the Martha. stuff to take over when he was Wait ready a minute, to retire. Martha. And we both thought that naturally... Stop it, Martha. Oh, what you want. I wouldn't go on with this if I were you. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? Would you not? You've already sprung a leak about you know what. What? What? About the Sprout, the little bugger, our son. If you start in on this other business, Martha, I warn you. I stand warned. Do we really have to go through all this? So anyway, I married the SOP. I had it all planned out. First, he'd take over the history department. Then when Daddy retired, he'd take over the whole college, you know? That was the way it was supposed to be. Getting angry, baby, huh? That was the way it was supposed to be. All very simple. And Daddy thought it was a good idea, too, for a while. Until he started watching for a couple of years getting angry until he watched for a couple of years and started thinking that maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all that maybe georgie boy didn't have the stuff that maybe he didn't have it in it stop it martha like hell i will you see george didn't have much push he wasn't particularly aggressive in fact he was sort of a flop a great big fat flop oh, stop it martha I hope that was an empty bottle, George. You can't afford to waste good liquor. Not on your salary, not on an associate professor's salary. What do you think of me? What do you mean? You've known me nearly all your life. You must have formed some opinion of me. Well, I always thought that you were a very nice person. Did you know I was an alcoholic? What? Did you know that? Look, I think I should be going. Sit down, Benjamin. Mr. Robinson, if you don't mind my saying so, this conversation is getting a little strange. Now, I'm sure that Mr. Robinson will be here any minute now. No. What? My husband will be back quite late. He should be gone for several hours. Oh, my God. Pardon? Oh, no, Mrs. Robinson. Oh, no. What's wrong? Mrs. Robinson, you didn't... I mean, you didn't expect... 
What? I mean, you didn't really think I'd do something like that. <laughs> like what? What do you think? <laughs> well, I don't know. For God's sake, <laughs> Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Here we are. You got me into your house. You give me a drink. You put on music. Now you start opening up your personal life to me and tell me your husband won't be home for hours. So? Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Aren't you? complaining about his ulcers. Yeah, well, I don't know what line Moore's in, but uh, myself now, I'm a kind of hustler. Oh, a person gone like a living. Uh, pardon me, ma'am? I said a person's got to make a living. Are you sure you heard what I said? Sorry, Tex, my mind isn't all here. I don't want to be late for my date with Maury. Listen, sweetie, why don't you run along and um, take the number and we're going to get in touch with each other real soon, aren't we? Would you believe that? I forgot to get to the bank and now it's too late. Listen, I have to take a taxi. I need a few bucks. I hate to ask you, but you're such a doll. You know, Cass, that's a funny thing, you mentioning money. Because I was just about to ask you for some. You were going to ask me for money? Huh? Well, hell, why do you think I come all the way up here from Texas for? You were going to ask me for money. Who the hell do you think you're dealing with? Some old slut on 42nd Street? In case you didn't happen to notice it, you big Texas longhorn bull. I'm one hell of a gorgeous chick. Well, now, Cass, you take heard it. Now. At 28 years old, you think you can come up here and pull this kind of crap up here? Well, you're out of your mind. Now, on, I can just kill you with my bands. Where you get out of here? Where you get out of here? Oh, Cass, honey. Oh, Cass, come on now. 